Hi, my name is Tamara, and you are watching Things Even a Monkey Should Know. Thanks for watching today. As you know, if you've watched a few of my other videos, I am not a professional at this do-it-yourself stuff. I'm just a girl who's figured out that there are a lot of things around the house and in the yard and on my cars that I can do myself and save myself and hopefully now you a bundle of money. So today we're going to be doing something a little fun and exciting and maybe scary, not scary. Um, I'm going to be using a chainsaw and cutting down a couple of dead trees and uh, also cutting up one that's already down. So let's get started. So as always, of course, um, I'm going to go over the things that you'll need today or that you might need today. Safety first. Um, you may need some hearing protection depending on the kind of chainsaw you have. You will definitely want some safety goggles or glasses. You need to have a decent set of working gloves. You will need a chainsaw, and I can hear the boos and hisses from here. I have an electric chainsaw. Um, I switched to electric because I used to have a gas chainsaw, and it was very consistent that that chainsaw, no matter what I did, no matter how good I was with the maintenance, how much upkeep I did on it, it was going to be really hard to start every single time, and I got really sick and tired of that. So I finally decided I wanted a chainsaw that I knew would switch on every time I used it because I don't really use them that often. Um, so that's why I switched to electric. Um, with electric, of course, you will need an extension cord. Mine is, the size of mine is a little bit of overkill for my chainsaw, but better to have too heavy of a gauge of extension cord than too light. Um, you will definitely need some bar and chain oil and you should know which kind of oil goes with your chainsaw. Um, as it turned out, mine uses a higher viscosity oil than what I can buy in a regular home improvement store, so I have to special order this. And the reason that you want to always have bar and chain oil in your chainsaw is because if you don't, um, your chainsaw is just going to smoke and cough and it's not really going to cut through your wood and it's going to dull your, uh, your chain really quickly. So that is a must have. The only other thing that you might need is you might need a wedge depending on the size tree that you're going to be um, cutting down or cutting up. I'm only going to be doing small trees today so it is not very likely that I will need a wedge. However, I am going to keep it handy just in case because it can help you control the direction that your tree falls. Um, oh, one other thing that you might need is you might need, I don't know if you can see this, um, I have a hand truck for this because I have some really big logs that I'm going to be cutting up, um, but you might need something to haul away all of your tree debris and whatever. So I think that's just about everything. So let's get sawing. So what is it that you want to do first above anything else? You want to make sure that you fill up your chainsaw with your bar and chain oil, because that is something you do not want to forget but, and remember right in the middle of trying to chainsaw, because your saw starts to smoke. You're, there's always going to be a very clearly designated uh, tank on your saw for the bar and chain oil. It will typically, uh, it'll either say, um, or it'll have, it usually has a little picture I don't know if you can see on that one, but it's just got a little old-fashioned oil can with a little drop coming out of it. And uh, if you have a gasoline chainsaw, which, you know, I'm sorry, we're not going to be tackling those today, uh, there, you'll be able to tell, it's very apparent, which one takes the oil, or which tank is for the oil, and which tank is for the gasoline. So there are a couple of important things to know about a chainsaw um, before you set out to just use one cold turkey. First is, this is the trigger button, which makes it go. Um, but in order to be using that, or to make it go, you have to be holding in this other button over here simultaneously, so that whenever you punch it, it goes. Oh, but I'm holding everything down, it's all plugged in, why is it not going? Well, that's because it has this nifty little feature called a chain break 
which is this right here. If this thing is forward on the chainsaw, your chainsaw is not going to respond. It's a safety feature. Sometimes it can be a little annoying whenever it flips on and you don't mean for it to, but it's to keep you from cutting off your own limbs, not just tree limbs. So see, once I did that, it goes. Um, all of them are going to have a place. I'll go ahead and put the chain brake rack on because I don't need to be having the chainsaw where it can run at the moment. All of them are going to have a um, chain adjustment feature of some sort. Some of them um, you have to actually unbolt a couple of nuts to um, adjust your chain. This one is so nice. It has just this chain adjustment right here where I can just turn it and it should make that chain tight. Whoops. There we go. So you don't want your chain to be loose and floppy whenever you're trying to use it because then it won't cut well. So again, there. So that, this one is um, more self-adjusting than some of them. It's another reason why I liked it. I kind of got tired of having to stop in the middle of what I was doing, take off the bolts on the other one, adjust the chain, and then put it all back together. So, uh, you know, again, it's just easier. Um, those are really the main things you need to know. Chain brake, how to turn it on. So let's get going. So as you can see, the first tree that I'm tackling, actually all the trees, <coughs> excuse me, that I'm tackling, <coughs> <coughs> wow, I think I just ate a bug. Ugh. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> it's a very small tree. Um, so I'm not going to have some of the worries with it that you do whenever you're doing bigger trees. Although, always, um, it's always safety first with everything. Because remember, even a small piece of wood can fall and be you or be somebody else and really hurt you. Um, as humans, remember, we're pretty squishable. So always make sure that you have a nice safe place for the tree to fall and also a clear and open path for you to run away from that tree and always run at a 90 degree angle to where the tree is falling so that if your tree is full of branches you're not going to get whacked by branches as it comes down either so again I'm not having to worry quite as much on this tree because I can almost reach to the top of it the top of it actually got blown out in the last big windstorm that we had so it's been sitting here looking pretty sad and it needs to come down. So whenever you um, start to take your tree down, I'm gonna explain this first and then I'll do it. Um, <clears throat> you'll make a wet or a, uh, a notch, sorry, a notch cut in the tree. So what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna cut out about 25 to 30% of, of the tree, like cut through it by that much and um, make basically a notch. So you're gonna make a mouth in the tree. And uh, that, that sometimes I can't get a sentence together. It's really ridiculous. Um, you need to make that cut or that notch in whichever direction you want the tree to fall because that determines exactly where the tree is gonna fall. So you make your notch and then you come in from the back and you make a slice in the back which then should enable the tree to go ahead and be able to fall on its own in whichever direction you made your notch. Now the whole reason that I have a wedge and that it, if, especially if you're doing a bigger tree you might need one is because sometimes whenever you go and to make that cut in the back of the tree the tree is so big and heavy that even though you have your notch in the front it falls back and sits down on your saw and then your saw gets bound up in there and it won't run. So you have a wedge that you can shove in there and keep that tree from falling back on your saw. Now obviously we're not going to have to do that with this tree, but it's just a good thing to keep in mind. That's about all I can think of to tell you right here at the first. Um, I'll start sawing and uh, we'll see how things go because you know all of these things, they always sound good in theory, but sometimes whenever you go to practice them, sometimes they don't work out as you've seen quite as well as you think. Um, one other thing to remember is just that your chainsaw, whether it's a little 10 inch electric saw or whether it's a big 18 inch gas chainsaw, whatever, again, humans are very damageable. So have a lot of respect for the fact that that chain that's running around that bar on that saw, it can slice right through anything. So just be sure that you're really careful. Make sure you don't have any kids or pets or any other family members or anything damageable around because, you know, this is a potentially dangerous thing. So just be careful.
just for a little helpful guide, it's never a bad idea to make a little mark uh, where you're planning on making your notch in the tree. I am right-handed, so uh, I will probably be cutting it from this side. Um, but that way I just have a general idea of how far and exactly what I, where I want to be making my notch in the tree. Always do it at a height that's comfortable to you. Don't do it where you're having to squat too much or reach up or anything like that. Because if you make it like I'm doing it right about here, it's going to be plenty easy for me to lop this thing off for closer to the base later when the rest of the tree is out of the way. When you're using an electric chainsaw, always make sure that you have your cord out of the way of the direction the tree is going to be falling. So I got the main part of the tree down. It's really nice to have a really small tree to practice on, by the way, in case you didn't notice. But if this was bigger, I would have gotten the main part of the tree down. And now all I have to do is cut it off down close to the base. And uh, try to keep your chainsaw out of the dirt whenever you do that, because getting dirt caught in the teeth of the saw will make it go uh, dull a lot quicker. So you'll either have to get a new chain or, um, or sharpen it. So the less often you have to do that, the better. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give this a cut down at the base. So I actually really hate cutting down live trees, but sometimes it is necessary. And I've got this one and the one behind it that are, even if the other trees were gone from around them, they would never grow right now. And, um, Largely, they just don't need to be here and they're crowding some of the other trees and so it is time for them to go. So with what we've already learned from the other tree that I did, I'm going to just go ahead, cut these down and um, switch your angle a couple times so you can see what I'm doing and um, shut up and get to work. <laughs> So I'm sure that I'm saying something very witty and informative right here, as, you know, always happens. But unfortunately, I had apparently forgotten to turn on my microphone, which is a very recent thing that I got to try to make the audio better for you guys. So I am going to tell you most of what I was saying whenever I was making all these lovely gestures and things. Um, I'm telling you that the tree, if you had a large tree that you had cut down at this point, you would be wanting to cut the branches off the top to make it easier to haul away. And also before you try to start slicing up the main part of the tree, um, because the branches will get in the way, they can potentially bind your saw, uh, they can whack you, they can make your life miserable. So you want to go through and cut all of those off first. I had just cut down a skinny little pine tree, so I am not going to be cutting the branches off first. But uh, you would be wanting to do that. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut the tree at this point into manageable pieces. So as you can see here, my saw started to get bound in the tree, or the tree started to bind my saw, so I am going to cut a notch out of it, similar to what I had done to bring it down, so that it does not bind the saw blade and pinch it and hold on to it. So you can either do that um, whenever you're cutting a tree, or you can get um, a piece of the stump or something else to put under it so that you can, so that Whenever you cut it, it will just fall away very neatly and cleanly and does not bind your saw blade. So since I really have nothing else to say on this topic, let's just watch me work in fast motion because that's much more entertaining anyways. Yeah. 
I hope you saw how easy and really not scary it is to chainsaw a tree. I know that I said that I was going to be doing a big fallen log also. I decided that I'm going to save that for a segment that I will post next week because uh, that would wind up making this week's too long I think and I do try really hard to keep these down to about 10 minutes. I know sometimes I go over but I do try hard. Um, so anyways, I hope that uh, you learned a few things and that you saw that using a chainsaw, as long as you're careful, as with all tools really, you should always be careful, um, but I hope that you saw that it's not that bad and I know that uh, whenever I was clearing the trees I could have done that with, uh, you know, faster using a wheelbarrow, but it wouldn't have been nearly as much fun for you to watch me do that with something with a wheel on it as opposed to running back and forth through my yard. Much more entertaining, right? So I do hope you got a little entertained, but mostly I hope that you learned some stuff. And I hope you'll join me again next time. And if you liked my video, please remember to subscribe. Thanks so much. I'll see you soon.